Greetings and shalom. This is Adrian Scott and welcome to Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. It is time for some more shekels for your thoughts. And uh, I don't often necessarily go to the Bible on these videos, but I did want to quote a little piece of scripture, which is what my topic for shekels is going to be based on. So let's just jump right in and do that. And this scripture is found in Psalm 83, which, by the way, is quite the uh, end times prophetic psalm. So if you're playing around with the end times stuff and doing your readings like the Ezekiel 38 and Revelation and Matthew 24 and Daniel 7 and all that stuff, you should include Psalm 83 on that list. Now, I'm not necessarily going to touch on on that section of it. But I did want to touch on this one little part. It more or less picks up at the end of the psalm, and there I will start at verse 15, which reads, Chase them with your fierce storm, terrify them with your tempest, utterly disgrace them until they submit to your name, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and terrified forever. Let them die in disgrace. Then they will learn that you alone are called the Lord, that you alone are the most high, supreme over all the earth. And that was from the NLT, by the way, just as a by the by. So... The main gist of the topic that I wanted to discuss is just as we're seeing all of these prophetic events kind of happening and uh, things are are really ramping up and and in the Middle East and in other parts of the world as well. I think it is good to remember that we are dealing with a creator, that we are dealing with a God that has everything in control. I think I've made this mention before, but there was once a, a teacher that I really like, and he made a comment of, uh, did, it, did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? He knows the end from the beginning. He already has had a plan from day one, and he knows exactly what the outcome is going to be. And having read the Bible, I have some inkling of what the outcome is going to be. The good guys win. Yeah. So that's one thing I like about the Bible. There's going to be some tough times between now and then, but uh, in the end, the good guys win. So it can be easy to be discouraged. It can be easy to feel panicked. It could be easy to feel, I don't want to say hopeless, but that hope is fleeting that it's hard to hang on to. And I guess all I was really thinking to try and say is, is rest assured and be comforted that regardless of what happens, um, the good guys win. Um, God knows what's going on. Whatever bad happens, it is with his knowledge. He has permitted it. And there could be a number of reasons why that may be. I mean, oftentimes we read throughout Scripture, throughout the Old Testament, that, um, you know, the the nation of Israel are being punished for their wickedness, for, for transgressing, for not following the word of God, for chasing after other gods, for worshiping other gods, for building Asherah poles and Asherim and, uh, high, you know, building altars in high places and all of those things. And where he says that I will never leave them or forsake them, there is also a context when he says, I will by no means leave unpunished. Um, So there's a consequence for rejecting God's word. And that ties into a lot of other videos I've done, which is don't reject God's word. And there's some school of thought within religious circles that portions of the Bible 
And when I say the Bible, I am talking Genesis to Revelation, have been done away with, that they've been fulfilled, and we no longer need to do those. And I don't know, that that one has always just seemed crazy to me. If God is perfect and he doesn't change, then his word is perfect by extension, and I don't think it would need to change. Furthermore, adding to that, that the word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us. And who is that? That is Yeshua, our Messiah. So he is perfect. As much as he was fully man, you know, so he doesn't need to change. Now, if anything deviates from that, then it is change and therefore disqualifies from being the word of God or under the authority of the word of God. So when you take that entire word beginning to end and you apply it to your lives, there's so many benefits that come out of that. I mean, he says, why? Why, is, why are those instructions there? Because he wants us to live healthy, happy lives and prolong our days on this earth, right? We are only here for for a fleeting moment in the grand scheme of eternity. But while we are here, he wants us to have a good life. You know, now it's not to say that we're, you know, showering in money, that that's not necessarily the definition of a good life. Um, As a matter of fact, I mean, I I happen to know a few people that are actually um, reasonably comfortably wealthy. They don't have to ever worry about bills getting paid or anything like that. But having that comfort, having that cushion of wealth comes with a cost of its own. And it really does bring its own frustration with it, you know, so that's not necessarily the the best life. It's a stress fee life as far as paying bills, but paying bills isn't the be all and end all of being alive. So having a good life, that, that's having a happy family, having a good interactions with others, being attached and involved in your communities, um, fellowshipping with other believers. All of these things, to me, define a good life. Yeah. So that's what he wants us to have. And if you have a keen knowledge of that word and you know, getting back to the original point, that he is in charge and he has given us those instructions in the word. So if he's in charge and he already has a plan and he knows what's going to happen and it's happening a particular way to fill his purpose and his will, then it occurs to me the safest place to be is in his will. And you do that by being engrossed in that word. There's a lot of things that are very important in that fellowship being not being the least of them. But combined with all of that, I think at the core, it has to be this interaction with his holy and sacred word. It is life. It is life and blessing. And it also does warn of cursing if you reject it. All of it is in that word. So be in your word. I I can't stress it enough. Be in that word. Read it daily. You should be reading at least something daily. It doesn't have to be much, but the more you can do, the better, really. But be in that word daily and be in his will. If you're in that word, you're in his will. It's it's. If you are engrossed and living this word, then by default, you're going to be in his will. So, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I think it'll be a lot easier to be in his will if you're buried neck deep in this word. So with that being said, I don't want to belabor this too long, but um, that was when I just did want to throw it there and mention So with that, I will wish all of you um, blessings in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Lord. I would ask that if this video has encouraged you and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
hit the notification bell um, to be notified of all the uploads that we do. Subscribe to the assorted channels, be it YouTube, Rumble, or even our audio podcast. Know that all three things are out there. They're all under the same name, so you can find them all the way around. But uh, having said all that, I will just say shalom and bye for now.